Love is in the air with these cute fools for love. Welcome to Bold Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today is the Can't Sleep Creations You Are Loved Valentine collaboration, hosted by Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling, Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones, and me. Hi. We're joined by lots of our incredibly talented friends to bring you plenty of Valentine inspiration. You'll find links to Dawn and Annie's channels as well as the playlist in the description box. Please be sure to check out all the videos. You'll be so happy that you did. I've got a thing for Jack in the Boxes, so that's our first project. Let's get into it. To make this guy, we'll be using Model Magic. We'll need a 2.8 foam ball and a 3.8 foam ball. And I've cut flat spots on the top and bottom of both so that we can stack them. And I'm also going to be using one of these Dollar Tree cardboard gift boxes. Grabbing a handful of the clay, I'll roll it flat, nice and thin. I'll cut the clay to size, getting rid of all the excess, but we'll keep that handy. And now I wrap the clay around the foam ball, pressing it firmly to ensure it sticks well to the foam. You know the deal, right? We always start this way. I'm going to fill in any gaps with clay, blending it in with my fingers, and rolling it on the table to smooth it and blend it. I'll cover the top and bottom as well. So I'm just going to continue on like this until everything's covered and I'm happy with it. I'll repeat this exact same process on the other ball as well. Next I roll a thin cane of clay which I'll use to fill in the gap between the balls once we stack them, which we'll do using a toothpick. Now we'll just slide the smaller ball on top, easy peasy. Now I'll push that cane of clay into the gap using my fingers, and I'm going to incorporate the clay by rolling a paintbrush handle over it. Well, actually, it's a clay tool, but paintbrush handle works as well. And I'll do this around his head and neck until everything's nice and smooth. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want the two clays to blend together. You know what I mean? I rolled a few clay balls for his features. I'll cut this one in half for his chin. See, it's already kind of chin shaped. <laughs> so we'll pop that right on there. And I'm just gonna work it with my fingers and I'll go over it with my handle there to make sure it's well incorporated. I cut another in half for his cheeks. We'll make sure that they're well adhered. Again, just using my fingers, and I will use my tool handle to kind of get them well stuck. To give him dimples, I push a brush handle up into his cheeks to create a wee divot. I roll out his nose into a cone shape. I want him to have a pointy, impish nose, so this is going to kind of look like a chocolate chip. <laughs> And we'll just push it right in there between the cheeks. And again, I'm going to work it with my brush and my fingers just to make sure that it's really well stuck to the clay behind it. And finally, I've cut another small ball in two, this time for his ears, which we're going to place right on the side of his head, working them in just like we did all the other features. He's a jester in need of a jester hat, you know, the pointy hats they have. So I rolled some clay into cone shapes until I got them just how I wanted them. Originally, I was thinking I was just going to give him two points, but I changed my mind and now he gets four. Anyway, I attached the two side points first, again, rolling my handle over them just like before. And then I'm going to give them a slight curve at the very top. I attach the front and rear points in the same way as I did the sides, and I shape the bottom of the front one into a slight rounded point. I'll do the same to the rear, and then they'll get the slight curve at the top as well.
For his arms, I rolled a log of clay and cut it in half. I snapped a toothpick in half and pushed it into the sides of his body to anchor his arms. I'll just slide the arms right over the toothpick and again incorporate the clay both with my fingers and with the handle of my brush. Once that's done, I'll set him aside to dry overnight. Meanwhile, we'll paint his box. I'm using two coats of folk art chalk paint and patina on my box. And then after the paint dries, I'm going to give it a top coat with Mod Podge to seal it. Right, okay, our jester is dry and ready for paint. There is some slate cracking, just a wee bit, but no worries. I'll start with two coats of ceram coat white on his face, just the front. The back is part of his hat, so that'll get painted next. This guy was kind of inspired, eh, loosely inspired, by a vintage valentine that I saw on Pinterest. So I'm going to outline his hat with watermelon. I'm using a zero detail brush for this. Once it's outlined, I'll fill it in with a larger brush. The two side points of his hat are going to be watermelon, as well as the base of his cap, so the back of his head will be watermelon as well. I like to do the outlines because it keeps me from, you know, overpainting the space. So it's not necessary. It's just something I do. It helps me keep things where they're supposed to go. Know what I mean? I hope you guys enjoyed your holidays. I sure did, but I do feel a little burned out now. I guess that's true for most of us, right? Okay, so I'm just going to come in here with this bigger flat brush and I'll fill in any of the areas on his hat that will be red. We'll paint in those red points. I'll give his body two coats of watermelon too, except for his arms. They're going to be blue, like the front and rear point of the hat. Now for Valentine's Day, I maintain that red and turquoisey color for my decorations but this guy would be really cute red and purple red and pink or you know whatever your palette is go for it okay just finishing up the body here with the watermelon the front and back points of his hat as well as his arms are going to get two coats of ceram coat velvet teal it's a lovely, rich teal, and I'm going to start, just like before, by outlining the base of the points before I fill them in. Now I'm going to come in with a detail brush and give the teal points Tropic Bay Blue Rings. Or stripes, I guess. That's probably a better term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Also, I wanted to mention that I keep calling my detail brush liner brushes. Technically, they're not. Liner brushes are longer, but I don't know. I say that all the time. It's actually a detail brush because they're shorter and thin. The bristles, that is. The bristles on a liner brush are nice and long. I apologize. There we go. And white hearts will decorate the red points. I dry brush his cheeks and nose with watermelon and a wee bit for his chin too. He gets a Tropic Bay Blue eyeline just above his cheeks and let's give him some details in his ears. A bit hard to see, I think. Okay, so I'm adding his eyes here, but I wasn't feeling them at all. So you'll see that I do eventually change them. Someone asked me recently if I ever mess up. <laughs> well, here you go. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like them. However, there's almost always a way to correct something that doesn't work. And I wind up changing his mouth too. Didn't like that either. Anyway, I give his sleeves some white stripes and one for his belly.
I add a few tail hearts to the stripe on his belly. You won't really see them, but you know, I'd like to do the detail. And again, I think I mentioned it that this is ceramic coat velvet teal. Such a pretty color. I'm grabbing my folk art floating medium to shade his face. That's the only part of him that's getting shaded today. Okay, this is a clear gel medium. So I'm going to prep my brush with the floating medium. Then I'm going to scoop up some paint onto the corner of my brush, side loading that Tropic Bay Blue. I'll stroke my brush on my plate to load the bristles with the paint and the medium. This blends the medium with the paint, giving a gradient of color. It's darkest at the paint corner of my brush and fades as it moves toward the middle of the brush. So with the paint corner of my brush, where I want my darkest shadow along the edge of his face, I'll stroke around the area, the, the full perimeter of his face, reloading my brush as needed. I'm just kind of going along where the hat meets the face and where his body meets the face. I'm going to do a little under his cheeks and under his chin too. Okay, so here's where I redo his eyes and mouth. I decided he'd be exponentially cuter with crescent eyes. So I'm using my double zero detail brush and Ceramco charcoal to make that happen. I just painted over. I actually dabbed white paint over the original eyes and mouth. That worked well. So he's going to get some wee eyebrows and a wider grin for this wee guy too. Just tiny wee strokes for the eyebrows and like I said a nice wide grin. Gets a couple character lines at the corner of his eyes with Tropic Bay Blue. And you know what? I want to give his nose a more rosy look, so I'm just going to add a little watermelon to that. I dot around the edge of his hat with ceramic coat velvet teal, and I'm going to shake on some glitter. Now, once again, I got ahead of myself because I should have given him a top coat of Mod Podge before the glitter. This seems to be a mental block for me. <laughs> it's okay. After I glitter him, I sprayed him with clear matte sealer to keep the glitter from shedding. Then I added a Mod Podge top coat with cosmetic sponge. On to his embellishments. I glue some red tinsel pipe cleaners around his wrist using 3-in-1 glue for this. And he's going to get a crepe paper festoon collar. Again, I'm using 3-in-1 to attach the collar. I'll link my embellishments video that shows how to make the festooning in the description box along with all my supplies. A wee drop of hot glue at the back and I'll snip off the excess. I made a banner from Dollar Tree Glitter Hearts. They come in red and pink, so I painted and glittered a couple in blue to match our palette. I also glued heart beads to the ends of the banner and to the points on his hat. I didn't get that on camera, but you'll see it at the end. Now let's embellish his box. I cut some vinyl stickers with my silhouette, two that say Fool for Love for the front and back, and two that just say 14 for the sides. I dry brush the edges of the box with watermelon to age it a wee bit, and I'm going to go a little extra at the corners where it would be worn. top coat of Mod Podge to seal the vinyl. To make the crank, I drilled a hole in the center of the side of the box and I glued a small washer over it to give it a finished appearance. I cut a length of wire, which I'll push through the hole, and I'm going to curl it around itself on the inside of the box to keep it from popping out. I add a big old glob of hot glue to encase the wire, keeping it in place.
I bend the wire into a Z shape to form the crank. I also painted a wooden bead, which I'm going to attach to the crank as a handle. Buff some of the wire, then curl the end to keep the bead from falling off. And I'm also going to add a little bit of hot glue to keep the bead in place. With 3-in-1 glue and hot glue, I attach the jester to the box. And I'm going to trim out the top of the box with more of the festooning. And guess what? Once that's done, he's done. Yay. There he is, the Fool for Love Jack in the Box. DIY 2 is our Fool on a Stick. So we're starting with another foam ball with flat spots on the top and bottom. And we're going to cover him with the clay just the way we did the other guy. Same exact process. You know, pressing and rolling, filling in any gaps. Exactly the same. And here we are cutting a clay ball in half for his cheeks. using the handle of our tool to make his dimples. He also gets a cone-shaped nose. He's going to look exactly the same as our jack-in-the-box. So, again, this will look like a chocolate chip or a Hershey kiss. And I'm going to curve his nose up a wee bit. We'll pop on his chin, same as before. And now for his ears. I'm rolling at the points of his hat. And we'll attach them and incorporate them, same as we did with the other guy. We'll give them a wee curve, and he'll dry overnight. Again, he's got a wee bit of mild cracking, but that's okay. So he gets two coats of white on his face. Outlining his hat with watermelon, and then again we'll fill it in. I like making these wee guys on a stick. I don't know, I think they're really cute 
and really easy to incorporate pretty much anywhere in your decor. Okay, finishing up the red points of his hat, and then we'll move on to the teal. I do love this color very much. It's so pretty. Adding his Tropic Bay blue eye line. Again, it's like a curve with a dip in the center. Kind of like when you draw seagulls as a kid. Know what I mean? Coming in with a dry brush of watermelon on his cheeks, nose, and chin. I just realized that I almost forgot to detail his ears. And this time, we'll give him the arched eyes right off the bat. <laughs> and he's going to need character lines around the eyes in Tropic Bay. He gets Tropic Bay stripes on the teal points of his hat and white hearts on the red points. We'll shade his face with Tropic Bay following the exact same pattern that we did the last time. Same process. I added white dyed highlights to his eyes. I did this on the other guy too, and he'll get a top coat of Mod Podge. Same dots around his hat, and of course the glitter. This time I did remember to top coat him first. Yay me! Using a straw for his stick, and I made a collar from crepe paper, which will slide onto the straw. Directions for this can be found in the embellishment video as well as the festooning so you can look there to see how to make the collar and we're going to fluff it up a bit hot glue in the hole on the bottom of his head and i'm going to pop the straw into that i glued some crepe paper strands under the collar and i'll glue a glitter ball to the bottom of the straw i'll display him in a milk bottle I did add heart-shaped beads to the points of his hats, just like I did on the Jack in the Box. I hope you liked today's Valentine's project. Here's the final look. Please be sure to check out all the amazing videos on the playlist. Show them some love. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.